Charles Darwin's theory of evolution was introduced to the world with the November 1859 publication of On the Origin of Species. Understanding this book is important since it's intellectually dishonest to argue against something you don't fully understand, and it's intellectually lazy to blindly accept evolution as scientific truth while simultaneously dismissing skeptics for being ignorant. Fortunately, for skeptics and believers alike, I can summarize Darwin's 500-page tome in four minutes and four words. Ready? Darwin starts with the ancient common sense observation that children look like their parents, that offspring inherit characteristics through heredity. In most organisms, this process is not perfect. That is, children are not clones of their parents. The evidence for this variation might seem obvious to us, but in Darwin's day, the mechanism was unknown. Trust me, if you read On the Origin, you will be sick of pigeons and convinced that Darwin is right about variation by the time you finish chapter one, variation under domestication, and you'll groan when you turn the page and see that chapter two is variation under nature. But wait, there's more. Chapter five, laws of variation, repeats the argument with a little variation. Heredity with variation is straightforward, but Darwin's next insight is the clincher. As he explains in chapter one, we humans select individuals from domestic herds and flocks based on favored traits. Variations that we like are selected and propagated, while variations that we don't are not. Chapter three outlines the struggle for existence, and chapter four rocked the world with the words natural selection. And that, my friends, is Darwinian evolution heredity with variation subject to the pressure of natural selection. Heredity variation selection. It's important to note that individual organisms do not evolve. Instead, generations of organisms pass on traits with variation subject to selection, which over thousands of generations and vast quantities of time lead populations of organisms to change and evolve. Heredity with variation subject to selection over time. Heredity, Variation, Selection, Time. And that is Darwin's Theory of Evolution in four words and f four, hmm. We still have a little bit of extra time, which is great because there's been more than 150 years of science since Darwin's day. For example, Darwin makes some bold predictions about heredity without understanding what makes it work. It wasn't until Rosalind Franklin took a picture of the DNA molecule in 1953 that we finally had proof that Darwin was right. Decades of subsequent research across numerous disciplines have explored the rate of mutation through statistical analysis, geographical distribution, embryology, and morphology, and they've all confirmed Darwin's basic theory. Anyone that says that there isn't any evidence for evolution or that the evidence is weak has probably not read Darwin's 150-year-old book, but as Darwin wrote on page 171, long before having arrived at this part of my work, a crowd of difficulties will have occurred to the reader. Some of them are so grave that to this day I can never reflect on them without being staggered. Why, if species have descended from other species by insensibly fine gradations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? Which brings up the fossil record which Darwin explicitly notes is imperfect, but imperfect is not the same as non-existent. And once again, 150 years of hunting and digging have continuously filled in the gaps with more and more transitional forms. For example, Darwin himself made a bold and novel prediction that an ancient population of bear-like animals could have evolved into whales, but he had no evidence of this. Today, we have a wonderful transitional series. Every time a skeptic has shouted, aha, there's a missing transitional form, a young field researcher has replied, found it over here. The skeptics are, however, not stupid. And in reality, science thrives on aggressive skepticism. And honestly, anyone that simply believes evolution to be true because a teacher told them so does not grasp its depth. Humans evolved from primate ancestors? <laughs> That's mildly interesting. Darwin's profound insight is that all life on this planet can be explained via evolution. There is grandeur in this view of life with its several powers, having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and our being evolved. <laughs>